David Gibson lost with a score of 444 to 484 to Ian Weinstein. And Mac Miller won with a score of 430 to 409 against Rafi Stern. So currently, David Gibson stands at 22-5. Remember, we have four games to go. 22-5, he holds a two-game lead over Ian Weinstein, who has 20 and 7. And then another two games back are Mac Miller, Joel Sherman, and Ori Swift. Mac Miller having the highest spread, therefore he's in third place. And that is why David is playing Mac right now. David needs to win... Well, it always helps if you win all of your game, but he has not sewn it up. There are four games to go, and he only has a two-game lead. So he has some winning to do. So David Gibson has a kind of clunky rack here to start things off, and after max play, he has Sinuate and Antes on his rack. Mac is one of our Wunderkins who came to us with his voice still unchanged. Um, always showed incredible promise right from the beginning. I know his parents who still accompany him as he's underage, despite the beard, he's still underage. Wonderful, wonderful supportive parents who clearly love him very much and uh, take him around uh, to different tournaments in order to show their support for him. And he's consequently a very, very stable, lovely, and obviously intelligent young man. We love having him with us. David Gibson needs an open E for Turpinol, if he were to get that from Mac Miller. Assuming Mac chooses to play antes in uh, one of several spots, David Gibson will not get that E that he needs, but if Mac were to choose Sinuate, then he would get it. But no, Mac is going for anti, so David nope. Gibson will not get Turpinol. Don't you love it when that works out just the way you're supposed to let it work out? That's right. If he had played it elsewhere. All right, so T-I-L-N-O-P-R. Turpinol and Pleotron are the only two bingos in that rack. He might play Lip and Aunties. Lipo. Lipo to the right of aunties is an, op is an option, saving the very nice NTR. Early in the game, you shouldn't worry too much about um, not balancing your rack in terms of vowels. There are so many vowels left. Um, Lipo scores very well, saves NTR, which are beautiful. Pick a couple of vowels and you're off to the races. 30 points for Lipo. Or Lipo, I guess. It's also worth looking at uh, options with sext and uh, mir, perhaps, M-I-R, so T-R words like trip or trop. Well, that'd be trop if you go with the French word, but... Let's see what... Okay, without doing any iterations, li lipo is, comes up first, followed by sext, M-I-R, trop, uh, to make mir, and T-R-O-P, trop which of course takes an E, so that's a little dangerous. He can also just play Tropin, T-R-O-P-I-N, which also takes an E. But it would allow him to uh, score well and a uh, greater chance of picking one of the S's or blanks or high point tiles. So David Gibson's going with pot here. All right. I'm not sure what that one's for. I think he probably could have done better than that. Mm, yeah, not my choice. But he's uh, definitely creating a, a lane for himself. 
and uh, David Gibson has 46 points. I'm sure that'll get put up very quickly. You know, these Scrabble racks have gotten so long <laughs> that it's harder and harder to see the tiles. Okay, he's clearly got nothing. This is definitely a rack that you... Yeah, he's looking at Gringo, it looks... Oh, or at least that's what I see when I look at his rack and through that... through the N. Gyro, I'm not exactly sure. He, de he definitely has an ING. Gyro. Oh, there, that's what he's thinking of. He's thinking of playing to the right of pot gyro to make P-I-O-R-N sexto, which is a very, really nice thought. Yeah, that's a great play. Now it takes an N, and he doesn't have one on his rack, sexton, but still a lovely play. Scores a lot, undoubles everything he needs to. It's a perfect play. Love it. David Gibson does have that end to make a sexton play, but so far not seeing anything. He's got two eyes. With the letters he has that would allow for a, a decent scoring play using the sexton option. He could play um, Linny through the N and Antes as a mm -hmm. decently scoring play. I uh, hate the IR though, don't you? I hate saving IR. I mean, if you have to, you have to, but I hate it. If he was playing uh, Collins, since we're just <laughs> he'd be able to play Liney to the right of Auntie's because NY is good and that would be worth a ton of points. Nurly as well would be a nice option mm. to get rid of his letters, but mm. in this uh, book, he's got uh, no clear option that does everything. He nurly perfectly. has it. Well, we might be seeing something like uh, yin to the right of pi and the g. Linny is what's coming up on Quackle. Or yin in the same um, to the right of aunties is another possibility. And let's see what's happening on CSW if they've started their game. In this we have Evans Clinchy against Tim Weiss. And I'm sure Evans started with Index because he's got that on his opening rack, and he does. So Linny does go down. Good scoring option here. And on um, CSW, Collins, right now, uh, if with it being his turn, uh, Evans is up 95 to 80. So a nice tight game to start. Lenny goes down, excellent. Agro Tef. It's always interesting to see how people put down the, the tiles on their rack. They, um, obviously he's got Fagator, which he might be being too polite to put down in that order. And Frottage through a T. A frontage was just, uh, it was it was blocked, but he couldn't have played it because Gyro was in the wear. Foot gear, so I don't think he's got anywhere to play. If Sextor was good, it would fit. So he might just choose to play something like Of underneath Linny, under the L-I, saving Gator, which is a lovely save. But this board is uh, very s quickly not becoming that nice. You need an S for Emu. You need, uh, as well, an N for Sexton. Or an S. He doesn't have either. He might choose to just play of um, next to the A in Aunties for 26 points. So that's certainly a very reasonable choice. Leaving the LI open for his very nice rack. He could play Fog to the right of Gyro and make Pig and Go, saving Rate, which is even better. 
But again, he doesn't have really anything to... If he plays Fog, then he can't really do anything off Pig because he doesn't have an S right now. And we see that David uh, has a mitt full of E's. He'd love to see an, a C for cheesier would be the most ideal, but of <laughs> course Mac does not have a C on his rack, so he's not going to be getting that. Well, he also has, um, let's see, sheenier heresies. Nothing that he can play, though. Etherize. Hexerize. That's a, that's a great word. H-E-X-E-R-E-I, -E -E which actually takes an S as well. I don't even know how to pronounce that one. I know it's just a noun that refers to witchcraft, so I would think like hexery or something, but we, we don't usually Do we know what hexery means? I, and I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. I believe it's just uh, just witchcraft in general is what okay. it refers to, so my guess would be hexery, but we don't know. All we have to know is that they work oh, as words. Oh, so it's related to, to hex. Ah, I never knew yes. that. Yes. There you go. Mac is still thinking... Uh, a little bit longer but playing of looks like he's finally pulled yep. the trigger on it all right quacko agrees david gibson is in great shape to win this event the winner of this event getting a ten thousand dollar first prize so it's a pretty nice little paycheck if you can pull this one off david has a history of being very generous with his prize money um, at least once, and I think twice, actually, I know of, that he has taken his prize money and actually sent it to other participants who were not in the money some of his prize money to share the wealth around a bit. That's the uh, kind of gentleman he is. All right. So David's continuing to groom his rack and to try to score some points without blocking a place where he can actually play himself. Remember, he's the only one right now who has an S. And is that EV at the end of Max Rap? It is, yes. Oh, okay. It's interesting to uh, compare this uh, play of A and Fa, for example, compared to high H-I-E, G-I, and P-I-E, which would be a comparative play, but uh, this one that Gibson's chosen doesn't offer anything so easy back to the opponent in terms of the amount of points to be scored, and I would say that ties well, in as well with his style of play. Yeah, if if uh, if um, Mac had picked up an IV instead of an EV, he would have had Ergative off that E, which would have, would have been a very nice gift. And the kind of things that happened to David and to David, David Gibson and David Eldar all day today. Um, it would be nice if uh, it could go the other way sometimes, occasionally. I th let's see what he can do. It's a, it's a lovely, you know, it's it, it's a hard rack that to, to break up because it has such great potential. And it's not like there's so many great places on the board for him to score. He can't play to the right of gyro. He doesn't have anything that will go off the G. He doesn't have an I or an O. So it seems what makes the most sense is, and considering he's ahead, is to is to play near the Li and Linny. Whether it's Vet on top of it, or Vat on top or below of it. Certainly more blocking would be playing Vat on top, or Veg. And Resiled. And that's what he's played. There you go. At the very least, David Gibson has Resiled underneath of emu. Okay, and he picks a bingo. Well, that's actually all he has. Although he does have a nine-letter bingo off or through the EL. Can anyone figure that out? It is elderlies. Now, we think of elderly normally as an adjective, and that's something you'll see in Scrabble quite a bit, or something where you perceive to be something that is not a verb or wouldn't take an S, for example, actually is. And this is an example of it. In this case, elderly is actually a noun, as in the elderly, I guess. And down comes resiled, which is the best play. 
someone of David's caliber will. If David had played Hajj, even with the eye hook, uh, Mac would not have been able to fit it in. see what he's got there. And David's picked the other... Oh no, he still has the blank there. Okay. I'm trying to see what he has. I believe... Come on, David, move your finger. I believe blah you're and then Ian blank. Blah, Ian blank? I believe that's I what he has. I think you're right. Ben Thal is the uh, only seven. And on this board, unless you're playing off an E, that's all you're really going to get. You're either going to get a 7 or you're going to get a 9, but you're not going to get much else on this board. I think we'll stop looking at the chat. <laughs> there we go, Alb. So Alb's a good play. It uh, scores fairly well for him. Keeps a balanced leave, and the he did have the there. possibility, though, of playing underneath Arietta, uh, sticking the H underneath there. And it's safe in uh, O W L E H does not take anything in Collins. It's a verb actually, but he could have played something like H A E N underneath Arietta, the E T T A, uh, to score a lot more points too. So we know that uh, David Gibson will definitely use all of his letters next turn. He has yeah. Bahines, or Evanish at the very least. Uh, and he's got them in two places. So he will be using all his letters next turn. Meanwhile, Mac is considering uh, Module. N-O, is that? Yeah, he's got mo Module N-O without the, the E. Where is he looking? Oh, modulo, right on the top, yeah. Modulo, okay. So right now we have a score of 285 to 217 in favor of Mac, but um, I think, well, the trouble with Evanish, even though you can play it to the right of Arietta, is that it makes a very, very, very vol uh, volatile spots putting the E at N, uh, 8N. Um, Vahines also slots a letter on the triple row uh, along row 14, but it's uh, a lot less volatile. So Vahines is being played alongside Sexto. Very <laughs> That's high an even better play. spot. <laughs> Great play. So I think that was a good choice. That's going to hurt in the morning. Yeah, 103 points when you have a nice lead. That really... <laughs> it's just so heartbreaking. You have VH on your rack and you're able to get 100 points to take the lead. And we'll try to see what Mac has for you in a second. IZ, NOW, and two more. Kind of hard for us to give you predictions based on half a rack, but we'll see what we can do. I think we need to go back to the racks that were a lot shorter. And then they have no choice but to put them in a specific spot. I don't know, but once you go long, you never go wrong. Okay, another O, so it's uh, two O's, two I's, W, N, Z. All right, for the we rock. got it now. Okay. Doesn't help. <laughs> There's a possibility of Zonai, Z O N A E, uh, at three I at some point if Mac wants to hold on to the Z for this turn, which he might well want to do. However, he could also play win or one. Um, 
Too bad he can't play Wino. That would be an amazing dump for him to the right of Vahines at M3. But remember, he's not just thinking about just scoring some points now. He's looking how to balance his rack and uh, figure out ways to score not just this turn, but a couple turns down. David Gibson is already considering bag, it looks like, off of his recently played Vahines. Here's a nice play, actually. Zowie, 7C, making QI, getting rid of the Z, getting rid of the W. I think that's the play. Oh, he played Wazoo. All right. He's trying to be a bit more volatile. So he's trying to keep this as open as possible, considering his opponent, who really prefers when things are not open. So Unless he's behind. This is where opponent knowledge certainly comes in handy when considering plays. He doesn't have really anything. He's got a Dobi through the O, but it would force him to get rid of all his ra all of his tiles, all of his vowels. He doesn't have a great amount. He might want to just play Gob and keep A-C-T-E-D, which is a beautiful balanced rack. That might be a really smart play on his part. The good news for Mac is he has a blank. He has, and an S. He has that was a good pick. He has Ironist with an R blank off of Arietta's at the least. He's got lots of options, so that's just one that jumps out. I haven't looked through the O in Wazoo yet. There might be something better. <laughs> I know it's at all. Ooh, but he played Gob. There you go. Uh, no, there's nothing down yet. He's picked them back up. Ooh, ooh, ooh. So he's thinking about it. I think it's a good play. This is the point where Mac needs to try and keep a poker face and not uh, g give anything away, because, yeah, Inasatol will be coming down fairly quickly, assuming that stays open. Still thinking about it, and as well he should. Do you think? Does he have Inositol through the O? Yeah, Mac. Do you, have you seen all his rack? Yeah. Can so you tell me? So he has I I N O S T blank, all and right. that would give him Inositol. But David Gibson has played Abo to block that spot, and Mac okay. no longer has that triple triple. It's he also had Isotonic. Yes, Isotonic as well. So, oh my goodness, he's got a possible 10. So he's played Monistic at the end here. What was that 10 that he had? Well, he has, oh, he has already played? He yeah. had Abolitions off the ABO <laughs> that uh, nice. David just gave him. Um, the difference in points was only three, so it wasn't totally worth it. But a good lesson, take, take a few extra seconds. We'll see if those three points are going to make a difference at some point. But the, 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 uh, the beauty of monistic is that, of course, it ends in a C, and therefore David cannot hook it to create a word to come down along the left side. So there's lots of uh, really good stuff about playing monistic. So just like that, the, uh, the board is not friendly to David Gibson right now because there are four S's gone and both blanks gone, and really the only obvious open spots would use S's. So he's in some pretty big trouble right now. Mac has actually taken the weapon that David usually uses and put it right back against him. Now, I have a slight different score than my producer does. I have a score of 335 for David. So there's a mistake somewhere on someone's part, but I'm not exactly sure who. So bear in mind that there might be a three point different in score, actual score. Oh, you know what? It's, it's going to be me because I didn't make the eye of blank. There you go. <laughs> All right, the producers win this round. There we go. So David Gibson needs to create some kind of opening to give himself some shot here. He's probably not used to being in this position, having someone play his style against yeah, him. Yeah. Oh, I've seen it a couple of times, and it's, it's like living in an alternate universe. Mm -hmm.
So let's see what it. Let's see our score. Yeah, the score is now correct. Even I got it right. So C T A D G and two more. Haven't seen the rest yet. His All hands right. are on them. Doesn't doesn't even look like they're there. Oh. DU, it looks like. Yeah, so he's got duct and then DAG. Duct DAG. Okay. Duct DAG. Mac has to be feeling pretty good right now. He's in a, a really great spot at this point. Very nice suggestion of glued through the LE in Resiled and Arietta to get rid of the double D, get rid of the U, and get rid of that G. Doesn't do him a whole lot of good in terms of opening up bingo possibilities, however. Uh, the same um, three tiles can be played dug underneath the A, the second A in Arietta to open up. That's, uh, what do we call that, rabbit ears? Uh, bunny T, yeah, rabbit ears like on the TV. When he's creating two separate lines I call simultaneously. It, I call it forking. Forking, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Please chat people, it's forking with an R. <laughs> I think Scott Light, uh, Chris Light calls it bunny ears. See, I'll try to get you an update on the um, CSW game going on now. Uh, Evans Clinchy was up against Tim Weiss, 121 to 80, when we last met, and we're now towards the end of the game, and Evans Clinchy is still up 342 to 297. Uh, with a lot of tiles still to go, and uh, Tim Weiss is holding C-I-M-R-S-S -S blank uh, with not a lot of places to bingo, but this game is not nearly over for sure. So David Gibson's going for Zag here. The thing with this play is it allows for Giga plus any other play to go down that line. Oh, great. My email was hacked while we've been talking today. <laughs> I've got 40 messages in my junk box telling me that my hack mail could not be delivered. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> so with that play that David Gibson just made, uh, Mac actually has two A's that could potentially be used. They're not even just one. He has the last two A's, in fact, that could go in that spot. So Mac, again, is probably pretty happy to see this uh, development here. He's the only one who can use that spot. Is he, is he still not, has he played? No. Mac he played Zag, did he? Well, David Gibson played Zag, and now Mac has Awake plus IE on his rack. Awakey! So what should our boy do? Now he's created, by doing that, he's created an A hook after gig to make giga, knowing that there are, are some A's left. Did you just say that? I did indeed. Oh my goodness. I didn't <laughs> even know that, and we both said the same thing. Are mm. we in sync? We are in sync. Uh, I, I don't know if I should feel flattered or feel unloved because you didn't hear me say it. I think you should feel both simultaneously. <laughs> Well, it was a good thought on... Um, on your part, we'll just say it. I was thinking thought. David's part, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing he needs to do also is waste a turn and open up the board on the left side. Unless he thinks he can bingo off that A and Alb. We're down to seven unseen tiles. The A and Alp, he's not going to be able to bingo off of. There's just six spots beneath, so that is no oh, there longer you go. a line in action. You're right. So if he wants to open the board, he's going to have to do something. Uh, he's going to have to create a word after that C in order to make the possibility of an 8 hooking onto the I above the C in monistic. He's got the right side of the board. Quasi open. Another thing he could do is create tremendous volatility by going underneath Arietta. I think that's probably his best bet. But we have to see what uh, Mac is going to do. Now, Mac knows he's got the only last two E's. Now, if he can exploit that in any way, that might be something worth 
thinking about, but it looks like he has played, has he? Yeah, he's going into the bag. And let's see what he's played. I'm not sure. Maybe he hasn't yet. He can't play awake above Resiled, the LED, uh, in Resiled because there are two ends left. That would be really silly. No, it's still max term. Okay. All of the S's are gone and all of the blanks are gone. So nothing can stick underneath ERA. He doesn't have to worry about potentially blocking that lane. It's not that easy. Do you have any suggestions? I don't see anything really obvious here at this he point. He might want to play awake on top of RE and Resiled. Um, that might be an actual not bad play. Let's see what uh, Quackle has to say. Awake, well, it says awake over the LED in, in Resiled, but that's a big mistake because of the N hooks. I like Mac's decision here. He's decided to play weak. All and right. that, uh, that's fine. That just locks up any further setups there, given Although there are I no can't S's imagine left. that he doesn't know that he's got the last two uh, A's. I, I don't think it really mattered what he did in, in terms of, because um, there's really nowhere for David to, to bingo. David has crud. His rack actually does have crud on it, plus <laughs> a few other letters. Yeah, so it looks like David's going to lose this game. And he lost the last game, is that correct? Is that correct? Did I get that right? I'll take yeah, it. And now, quick. five losses. <laughs> Heaven forbid he actually loses once in a while. Yeah, he lost the last game, 484 to 444, and now he's about to lose again. So we have ourselves a competition, ladies and gentlemen. This division is not decided by any means. By any means. So David Gibson's playing Okay. <laughs> by hook or by crook? Unless it is crook. Has he hit his clock? He has. He knows he knows that he uh, that this game is over. He also had adduct off the A and Alb to maybe just, you know, put himself out of this misery. Yeah, and it looks like Mac's ha Mac has six tiles. This game, He has yeah. napery. The game was basically over after Monistic. There wasn't yeah, really absolutely. a whole lot to be done. All right. So let's have a look-see at the standings and see what's going to happen after this game. Well, what a beautiful fit there by Mac. He's played Piney to make a whole very, bunch of... Very, very pretty. That, well, that was worth a ton, eh? That's... Uh, Great style points and great points, period. Oh, I guess I had the rack, wrong rack. Yeah, for 49 points for that. So in this battle of the generations, it goes to generation new. <laughs> uh, whereas things are getting a little tighter over at... Um, Evan's board, when I told you that rack, the C-I-M-R-S-S blank, um, Tim was able to get down scrimps. Um, however, um, and to make the score 369 now, 342 for Evan. So Evans was ahead pretty much the whole game, and Tim came back with that bingo. However, he opened up the triple-triple line. He put an S on the triple line, and he opened up all sorts of stuff for Evans to play through. So uh, I have a feeling that that lead is not going to last for very long with seven tiles left in the bag. But there's a lot of bad stuff in the bag. B, C, G, T, V. Oh, here we go. He played Retrieve, opening by himself another triple, triple. Oh, and I think that emptied the bag, actually. 
So I think Evan's going to win that one very easily. He actually had a triple-triple revestry, which is Collins only, for 149 points. So I don't think he'll forget that word anytime soon. I don't think so. <laughs> we, have a, we have a final game here, or no, David's just finishing off? So Mac is just waiting for it to finish. So what's happening then is that after this game, David Gibson will now be at 22 and 6. Mac Meller will be at 19 and 10. Ian Weinstein cannot fall out of second place because he already has 20 wins. Mac can only go up to 19. So Ian will remain in second place. So we'll have the same thing. David in first place, Ian in second, and Mac in third. We don't know yet about uh, Joel Sherman and Ori Swift, who are both at 18. Uh, but there will be no changes in the uh, standings uh, unless Joel Sherman also wins, and he wins by uh, like 200 points. So, so in the, the next round, we'll see David again, and, um, and we, we might s well see him against Ian Weinstein. But that's until tomorrow, because is, this is our last game for the day, is it not? <laughs> this is already oh our last God. game for the day. We've been through seven games today. There are just three left in the tournament. Oh, so my God. As it stands, just taking a quick look here. Yeah, so there it's not are three move. players in the running, for sure, and... Potentially four. Joel could have had a big win right now because he's at the same win loss as Mac without knowing how he did this game. Ori Swift, too. I think those top five people are the ones who are uh, in the best uh, position. Obviously, David is, uh, is in a terrific spot being at 22 wins. So, Max had a remarkable run. He had a really a rough patch oh about God. midway through the tournament and he's oh, early just on yeah. early on he was like one and three one yeah. and four yeah he's fired right back into the mix here and is now threatening to win a national championship he's made the top 10 several times already in previous years which is very impressive and just 16 years old he's 16 just 16 he's already been playing for uh, three, four, five years at the very yeah, top yeah, of the yeah, game, yeah, yeah, yeah. and certainly longer before that. I knew him before his bar mitzvah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we hope everybody that you enjoyed today. We're looking forward to coming back tomorrow to bring you the last three rounds of play here in Fort Wayne, Indiana at the North American Scrabble Championship. Games will start at 9 a.m. Eastern Time tomorrow. Until Ish. then, <laughs> Ish, yeah. Until then, my name is Jesse Matthews. This is Robin Pollock Daniel alongside me, and we'll be back tomorrow morning. Thanks for tuning in. Have a good night, everybody.